going on guys it's lady b you wanted to know what a hero's best friend was and you wanted to know about that owl that we saw you also wanted to know about lassie well you're gonna find out all this and more stay tuned with the latest update sneak peek I could actually potato lalo and swag. Now, don't get the wrong idea. The king did not wind up in the dog house. This is actually the house for pets. It's their pet hut. This is a new unit to come to the Clash of Clans heroes. And when we click on it and take a look, we get introduced to four of the pets to come. Now these are mighty companions for the mightiest of heroes. So I guess in Town Hall 14, it's only fitting that they have some accompaniment to help them get through some of these heavy, hard hitting defenses, including that new battle builder hut, the weaponized builder huts that we're going to see in the game now. Each hero can take any one of the available hero pets into battle depending on the strategy you're using. Assigning different hero pets to different heroes will allow you to create various flexible strategies around the needs of your army compositions. Do you want your Barbarian King to have some extra range damage? Then you can bring the Electro Owl as his hero pet. Or maybe you want to bring the Queen Walk to the next level. Then you can give her a Unicorn for additional healing. So hero pets will have 10 levels each to upgrade and you can actually upgrade them with magic items just the way you would with your heroes. So you can use a book of heroes on your pets to actually move them up or a hammer of heroes for your pets as well. But let's take a look at the individual pets and see what they offer. First up, we have Lassie. Lassie is the trustiest hound to ever roam the village. This adorable but vicious pup will attack nearby targets and will even jump over walls to bite the mailman's leg. And in its eye, everything looks like a mailman's leg. Lassie's favorite target are within 2.5 tiles of the hero. Damage style is single target. It does only target ground and its movement speed is 32, making it the fastest moving of the pets. It also has a damage of 240 and hit points of 360, which makes it the heaviest hitting and the second to tankiest pet. Next up, we have the Electro Owl. This mysterious and superconductive bird of prey silently glides alongside your hero, automatically giving that hero additional points in coolness. But beyond those additional points of coolness in combat, the Electro Owl shoots a ranged attack that bounces once to a nearby target. Its favorite target is the hero's target. It is a single target damage type, and it targets both ground and air. Its movement speed is 20, making it the second slowest moving pet. It deals 145 damage per second, actually making it the second heaviest hitting pet, but at 2,500 hit points, it is the second least tankiest. One thing to keep in mind with the Electro Owl's range target is that it will not bounce with structures that are any more than one tile space apart from each other. We also have the Mighty Yak. While this messy haired monstrosity may seem less than menacing, the Mighty Yak skull and horns are definitely not to be trifled with. Tougher than mountains, the Mighty Yak uses his horns to batter a path for hero companions dealing extra damage to walls. The Mighty Yak's favorite target is within seven tiles of a hero. It does area splash damage and targets only ground, and its movement speed is 24, making it the second fastest pet. Damage per second is 96. It does pack a nice punch, though it is slow moving. But at 5,550 hit points, it is the tankiest unit of the pets. And our final magical fluffy pet is the unicorn. This pointy-headed prancing pony doesn't just act as a beacon at night for the lost travelers with its glowing horn. Heroes who bask in its regenerative radiance will recover damage over time as their own personal healer. The unicorn's favorite target is the hero, though if your hero is not up on the board, it will actually default over two troops. This is a single target heal type, and it targets both ground and air. The movement speed is 16, making it the slowest moving pet, but it doesn't matter because its main job is to actually heal. And its heal rate is 77, actually making it very similar to having two healers. Its hit points are rather low at 1950, making it the weakest of the pets. And I guess that's why they would have trust issues, so make sure that you keep this unicorn protected. 
So now that we got a glimpse into each of the pets, why don't we take a look at a couple of strategies? And I'm gonna show you two different strategies that I like the most. Now, the really great thing about this pet update is that you're gonna have so much variety to actually work with. You can swap around these pets with your heroes to suit whatever needs you want, whatever needs you need. And it might not necessarily be specific to a particular strategy, but it might even wind up going into a particular obstacle that you have to face. So, I mean, this could be very, very base specific the way you want to swap these around. But for today's sake, I'm actually going to talk to you about two different attack strategies, actually using the pet similarly with the same heroes. And this is because I think these are going to be very viable options for the particular pets um, with these two types of strategies. And they are the super witch and get ready for it some potato lalo action yes you heard it i did some zap quake log launcher potato lalo and you're gonna get to see it here so let's actually start off with the zap quake log launcher lalo where you can see my potato lalo in action but i'm actually a huge fan of this particular strategy watching vala do it so much and seeing the crazy value that you can actually get coming out of this log launcher and your hero dives and using the pets here are going to be very critical in how you do it. So in this particular case, I actually sectioned it off and I brought in the zap quake to take down the single targeting inferno. And really, I was just shaping up the path because I want to get to this town hall, take care of the core. And um, I actually wasn't sure that I would get the town hall down. So I also had to have a backup plan um, that it would take on the royal champion and I'd still have to take on the town hall. So that's reserving the warden ability to the end. <laughs> we'll see that in a second. So the royal champ I actually like using with Lassie. I like this combination together and you can see like under invisibility spell, it can actually help out quite a bit. And it even resets the, um, because it targets the storage here, it keeps the builder focused coming out of the battle builder hut focused onto the storage and not on fixing a defense. So this is kind of huge. It's a nice distraction there. Um, so you can use your invisibility spells in this combination actually pretty well to get some good value out of it. Now with the log launcher Lalo, you need a nice path and typically it's a line drive, like a long line drive towards a town hall to clear out to get into the core of the base. Two ice golems are typically needed in order to do this to tank for both your king and queen. Now with this, let's take a quick look so you can see what I have coming along with my heroes. I've got the Yak working along with my king and I've got the Unicorn with the queen, which I think might be hiding somewhere. Although it might, oh, there we go. It's hiding right behind the log launcher. So this really is indeed a nice combination, keeping that queen safe. And this is kind of perfect because I'm not doing a queen charge. So it gives the queen a little extra buff. And I like this coming in with a hero dive um, or Sui, however you want to call it. It's nice to see like that you can keep your queen moving along. And this yak really does help quite a bit in doing some tanking. So I do think these are great combinations for this particular strategy in using the yak with the king and the um, unicorn with the queen in this case. And you did see that I got a great amount of value with the royal champion. So I made it as far as getting through the core and Look at the hero health here. That queen's still full health and has her ability. King's just dying out, but the yak's still going. So he's helping out move this along and really tanking for the queen. I mean, we still have the ice golems in there, but he's barreling through and trying to help out quite a bit. And that all reserves the queen to be able to hang on to this ability long enough that she actually takes on the town hall here. Now, it doesn't quite get to um, the royal champion. And part of that is my mistake because I was a little slow moving and getting this headhunter down. If I had sent that in while everything was being targeted and um, just before the ice hound had popped, I actually could have taken that royal champ down. But it's no worry because we've got the electro owl to come in with a warden. And I love this combination together. Now, I the way I use this is um, and I think this is going to be really important for some of the Lalos. I think that you'll see a lot of value out of using your 
owl with your warden because it does actually sit slightly in front of your hero so it can easily take on some damage and you can lose it out quickly so I think with the Lalo push it's perfect because it has the loons actually tanking for it and even the hound at points before it receives any damage and you can keep it to the end of the raid so for me I think this is huge and I think we'll see it working with a lot of these um, either Lalos or even hybrids with the warden or royal champion and um possibly working with things like smashes where you have a lot of cover protecting and i don't know if you noticed but we re we had like that royal champ go down quickly with the assist of the electro owl so it was kind of nice work moving here now this electro owl working in this combination it moves everything through rather quickly. It really helps out the loon. You can see the chain effect coming through. And the one thing to keep in mind with this particular chain effect for the Electro Owl is that it will only go as far as um, one additional tile between the two target spaces. So yes, it does have that chain effect, but if it's any more than a tile space in between the two targets, it will not attack it. Um, but this is like super OP, so powerful that I didn't even need my warden ability. I mean, who knew I could actually potato Lalo and swag a warden ability. I guess watching ATN all these times has really paid off. So thank you, Vala. So the other strategy that I actually like this particular troop pet comp. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to call this. We have to kind of rename this. Um, but the, the combination of the pets and the heroes that I like together is um, this this particular one is with the super witch attack. And um, this you'll actually see what I was talking about previously where it sits, the owl actually sits a little bit further ahead of your heroes very often. And it can take on damage. And in this case, you do have to be kind of mindful of things like archer towers and air defenses that have that tentile radius because it does have to sit um, a little bit further because it's not quite in that full same range as the warden um, and even the queen and royal champion. So be mindful of this and no healers won't help it. So you are possibly essentially sacrificing it in situations like this where you're using warden walks, but my preference for this is that it actually helps speed up and move it through with something like a super witch attack where it can often um, die out, well, not triple due to issues on time. So keep that in mind when you're using it, that it could have a really good trade-off because it's helping keep that warden move that much quicker. So this actually quickly comes together, but you'll notice that the air defense does wind up targeting the electro owl and does it in here. And in this kind of strategy, even if I had brought in the loons, um, a little bit quicker. I don't know that it would have been quite enough to get it saved and through, though it might have. I mean, I, I could have tried working that just a little bit longer to keep it alive. But with this particular strategy, I mean, I used the yak with the king who helped really kind of like bully through the front, but you can see he died out a little bit quickly at the beginning. We've got the unicorn with the queen to help kind of keep her alive and through and I think this is huge because yeah sometimes the healers don't fully make it fully survive sometimes they split off so having that extra bump does help out the queen because you want to keep your queen ability to the end of a raid when we're talking about super witches I mean these types of strategies you very often need to keep your queen and royal champion ability as long as possible to the very tail end of the base especially if you have scatter shots or singles on the back end so that does help work through and I brought Lassie along with the royal champion and this one actually stays pretty nice and close um toe to toe with her it might take uh, like it says in this description it might take a little bit of a lead about two and a half tiles away or so so you might see it get slightly targeted but it does help clear the path actually rather quickly for um, the royal champion so I like this combination together quite a bit and you can see I did manage to keep um, a couple of witches alive in that core of the base to take on that multi take on the queen just get that taken down and we've got this queen full health here look at this queen with the unicorn that's actually continuing to stay alive and she's got her ability intact. So the Royal Champion comes through and she unfortunately takes the lead. So that means I need to use the Seeking Shield rather early here. So it does set off because of the scatter shot and launches to help um, target some of the on by defenses. And look at that. Look, Lassie really does like to assist. Lassie is a good, good uh 
robo pup <laughs> and actually helps out quite a bit by quickly taking that out. But again, this raid with the combination of the particular composition of pets that I used, I think is super overpowering because I had a swag queen ability at the very end of this raid also. So, I mean, I think this is going to be this is going to be massive what we see some of the players doing, particularly the pro players and what they come up with. Uh, I mean, it's there's a limitless amount of variety you can now do. So that's a sneak peek for our pets. And I mean, I, I think I probably could have done about a 24 hour video on this or more trying to come up with a ton of different combinations. But I figured I would give you what I thought was some of the best combinations to work with, with very viable strategies that we transitioned from Town Hall 13, now going into Town Hall 14. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the attack strategies that I did. Let me know what you think of the combinations that you're excited to see and excited to try out and use with what particular strategy. So get all of that in the comment section below. Why? Because I'm going to be doing a giveaway. If you listen to yesterday's video, you'll know that we are going to be giving away a very special secret, top secret Supercell mystery box. So the way that you enter to win is by commenting in the chat. I'm gonna select one lucky winner randomly from the video starting from yesterday's video. So get those comments. I wanna hear it. I wanna hear all about it, what you guys think. And make sure to stay tuned tomorrow as we do go over some of our final notes for the update to come. That's about it for today. Until next time, this is Lady V. I'll catch you guys later.